just a short note or shortish note here on what I'm calling desolate matrices. That is a matrix where the majority of its entries are zeros. So something like this would count as a desolate matrix where the majority of the entries are zeros. And the procedure for multiplying with these matrices, either pre-multiplying by them or post-multiplying by them, isn't to go through the normal procedure of the scalar product of the row times the column, but to consider them as compositions of elementary matrices. Now, you could consider any matrix, even if it was jam-packed full of numbers, to be a composition of elementary matrices, but it wouldn't serve any purpose in that case to do a multiplication that way, because it would just be as cumbersome adding combinations of all the rows as it would be to find the individual entries by using the row times the columns. Well, first of all, consider the case of pre-multiplication. And with pre multiplications, then what you'll be considering will be elementary row operations. Oh, just a reminder, let's see if I just stick with 3x3 three three matrices just now. I'll put this general one down here. There's a 3x3 three three matrix. I'm going to pre multiply it by this matrix, which is jam packed full of zeros, if you like. What would the result of that multiplication be? Well, all that this multiplication would do would be, remember the technique for multiplication is the row times the column. If I go through it, not too laboriously here, it's going to be the first element in the row times the first element in the column, second element in the row, second in the column, third in the row, third in the, third in the column. So it's going to be one lot of A, none of them. One lot of B, but none of them. One lot of C, but none of them. So all that's happened is it's replicated the first row. It's a row operation. The first row produces the first row entries. And what this is saying is, I'll have all the first row entries, but none of the other rows. None of the second row, none of the third row. Remember, it went down the way, two and then three. And then this, this row says then, I'll have none of anything. So it'll just be zero, 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 zero. Multiplying by that matrix just says, the new matrix will have, in the first row position, it'll have the first row and then nothing else. That common one, the identity matrix for the 3x3 three three matrix. If I was multiplying by that, then of course what that says is, the first row produces the first row of answers, and I'll have one of the top row and none of the others, so it'll be ABC. This one says, in the second row position, the second row gives all the second row answers, I'll have none of the first row, one of the second, none of the third. So that just says, in the second row, put the second row. And this one says, in the third row, I'm just going to put the third row. I'll have none of them, none of them, but one of each of those. G, H, I. Of course, that was the simple one. That was the identity matrix. What about the reverse of that? What should this do? Whoops. Just by looking at it, where well, that's that same matrix. Then, using... The row operations, equivalent to this, pre-multiplication, row operations. This says, the first row in the product will have none of the first row, none of the second row, that's the third row. It says, put the third row in the first position, first row position. This says, in the second row position, I'll have the second row, so that's the D, E, F. And this says, in the third row position, I'll have the first row, because it'll be A, B, C. It's actually very quick. And of course, what that's done is, it's carried out a reflection. That would be the row reflection matrix, I should have said. It's carried out a row reflection. Right, do a couple of cases. Here's a simple case here then of a 3x3 three three times a 3x3. Three three. So the answer will be a 3x3. Three three. Not doing the individual multiplications, row times column, just by considering it as a composition of elementary matrices. It's a pre-multiplication, so I'm considering it as row operations. Each row produces the row and the answer. So what this says for the final answer is, the top row and the answer will be made up of two lots of the middle row. None of the first, none of the third, two lots in the middle row. So that would be two, six, ten. The middle row and the answer, coming from the second row here, will be made up of the top row. Two, three, four. And the bottom row and the answer in the product will be made up of 
row 2 and row 3. That's adding them together. So we've got 3, 7, 11. Here's another case here. We've got this matrix. That's a 4 by 5. There are 4 rows and 5 columns. I've got a 4 by a 5. Here I've got 5 rows with 3 columns. So they conform for multiplication. And my result should be a 4 by 3. Those match, so I'm left with a 4 by 3. So it'll be four rows of three answers. It's a pre-multiplication, so I'm going to use row operations, and this says this will produce the first row of answers. These have got no effect in this first row. And this says in the first row, I'm going to have none of the first, none of the second. I'm going to have the third row and the fifth row added together. These two added together. One, five, seventeen. This row says, for the next row in my answer, I'm just going to have row 4. 1, 1, 2. This row says, for the third row in my answer, I'm going to have the first row and the second row. That's going to be 4, 7, 10. And this one says, for the last row in my answer, I'm going to have the last row. 0, 1, 8. And that's the multiplication done. Now the second case, post-multiplication. When you post multiply by an elementary matrix, you're going to carry out a column operation. Simple case to start with. A 3 by 3 matrix. That same matrix started off with the very first time with the pre-multiplication. What's going to happen here? Well, if I just go through the steps, I've got A and nothing and nothing. So that's the A. I've got nothing and nothing and nothing. So it's a zero. And I've got nothing and nothing and nothing. Or zeros if you prefer. That's still a zero. Then what I've got? I've got D and zero and zero. So it's a D. I've got zero and zero and zero. I've got zero and zero and zero. I've got G and zero and zero. Zero and zero and zero. And zero and zero and zero. Lots of zeros because I've got a desolate matrix here. What happened this time? Well, if I'm post-multiplying by one of these matrices, desolate or elementary. Then it's the columns in this matrix that form the columns in the answer. That's why it's column operations. And what it said here is, the first column produces the first columns in the answer. And this says, to produce this first column, I'm going to have one of the first column and none of the other two. So I've got my first column, ADG, and none of the other two. And then, of course, the rest just said I'll have none of anything else. Now, what happens this time if I post-multiply by this reverse identity matrix? Well, if I just go through the steps, first of all, I would have 0 and 0 and C. I would have 0 and B and 0. I would have A and 0 and 0. I would have 0 and 0 and F. I'd have 0 and E and 0. I would have D and 0 and 0. And then I would have 0 and 0 and I. 0 and H and 0. And G and 0 and 0. So what's happened this time? Well, looking at the column operations, what this says, in the, the first column produces the first column. So this says, for the first column in the answer, in the product, I'm going to write the third column. There it is. CFI, CFI. This says, the second column will give me the second column answers. To get the second column in my answers, I'm going to use the second column. So that's still B, E, H. And this says to get the third column in my answers, I'm going to use the first, and none of the other two, the first column, the A, D, G. And of course, that's carried out a column reflection. But the important bit here is, if you're post-multiplying by a matrix, either elementary or a jumbled up one, a desolate matrix, then it's column operations you'll be using. and You don't need to go through the multiplication process. You can just consider what each of the columns is going to put into the columns in the answer. So, a couple of examples then using the same matrices here as in the first case with the pre-multiplication. Pre-multiplication, row operations. Post-multiplication, column operations. So I should be able to rattle these answers off quite quickly. Each of the, row, each of the columns... In the matrix, in the desolate matrix, will give me the columns in the answer. So this says, for my first column, I'm going to have the middle column. So that'll go three, three, four. The middle column says I'll have two of the first 
in one of the last column. So it'll be two of this and one of those. So it'll be four and the four is eight, two and the five is seven, four and the six is 10. And then this last column says in the last column, I'm gonna have not the first, not the second, but just the last column, that's the four, five, six. There, that's the multiplication. And here again, there's the same matrix, the same decimal matrix, but I had to change this one because obviously it wasn't going to conform both ways round. Because what I had here originally was, this was a four by five. The first time round it was a four by five times a five by three, so that worked. But I can't put the five by three in the front here, so I had to create a new one. So here I've got three rows and four columns is a three by four. They conform, the fours match, so the result should be a three by five. So I'm looking for a three by five matrix. Three rows with five entries. Now, it's a post multiplication, so I'm considering column operations. And this says, the first column in my answer will involve the third column. The third column is five, nine, two. It says the second column in my answer should again just be the same thing. Five, nine, two, which was the third column. The third column in my answer should just involve the first column. One, one, one. The fourth column my answer should just involve the second column. Three, four, one. And the last column my answer should involve the first and the last. So it'll be one in seven is eight, one in 16 is 17, and one in three is four. There, that's a fairly painless way to multiply matrices if you've got decimal matrices. And of course, the point here isn't just to do it with a matrix like that. It's when you're going to be carrying out block multiplications where you take a matrix and divide it into blocks so that some of the blocks are either an identity matrix of a certain size or maybe a zero matrix of a certain size or preferably some sort of desolate matrix of a certain size because those form very easy multiplications. So to finish, here's two for you to do very quickly. So the first multiplication is a pre-multiplication, so I'm going to use row operations or consider this as a composition of elementary row matrices. Because strictly speaking, an elementary row matrix should only carry out one elementary row operation, which is either interchange two rows, multiply a row by a scalar, or add a scalar multiple of one row to another. And of course, this is a big jumble of them all together, so I'll not call it an elementary matrix, I'll just call it a decimal matrix. Well, what size is this? Four by five. This is five by three. Five rows of three columns, so I'm looking for a four by three matrix as my answer. And what this would say then, as a pre-multiplication, I'm considering the rows. The rows produce the rows. The first row, of entries should just be made up of the very first row. So that would be 204. The next row of entries should be made up of the third, one, third and fourth rows. That's these two. So that's one and four, that's five, three, negative three. The next row should just be made up of the second row, negative three, one, two. And the last row should be made up of the fourth and fifth rows. That's these two, six, two, zero. And the second one, the same decimal matrix, but of course I had to change the other one or it wouldn't have conformed because I've still got this four by five matrix, but I couldn't have used a five by three there. I had to match that. So that's why I've changed that into four by four. So a four by four times a four by five conforms. They match and we're left with a four by five. So it's be quite a big matrix. Four rows of five entries in each row. It's a post multiplication, so I'm going to carry this out thinking, it from thinking of it from behind as column operations. And what this is is the first column will be produced just from the first column, so that's one, negative two, three, four. The second column is going to be produced just from the third column, so that's negative one, four, two, one. The third column is going to be performed using just the second column. 2, 1, negative 1, negative 3. The fourth column is going to be made up of the second and fourth columns. So that means I'm going to have 3 and 2 is 5, 1 and 0 is 1, negative 1 and 4 is 3, negative 3 and 2 is negative 1. And the last column will produce the last column just using the last column. 3, 0, 4, 2. There you go. 
fairly painless for a multiplication of two sizable matrices. If you've got a desolate matrix, as I'm calling it, where most of the entries are zero, then instead of going through the laborious multiplication technique of row times column, just considering it as row operations or column operations. Each row tells you which rows to put in the answer for that row. Each column tells you which columns to put in the answer for that column. And I reckon this is more reliable because instead of doing the various multiplications and making those mistakes that you do every so often when you go, oh, one times zero is zero, two times zero is zero, three times one is three, one times zero is one, and you slip up there and you don't realize it putting all the numbers down. Here, there's no multiplications involved. Well, not in these cases. If there were twos, of course there might be, because all I've got are replications of rows and replications of columns. So you can see at a glance what should go down rather than carrying out a series of arithmetical operations.